Hey everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Strip Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to learn how to paint this sunset and learn how to paint a road. Okay, so you're going to need the following colours today. They are titanium white, cad yellow, matte orange, rose pink, crimson, cobalt blue, sap green, iris purple, burnt umber and ivory black. Now I've got a burnt sienna stain canvas that I've used cobalt blue just to create an outline of a road with some hills. We're going to have a sun which I've used chalk just because we're going to use pastel colours in the middle and some faraway mountains and some clouds. So if you'd like to pause the video and copy down the outline, feel free to do so and we'll get cracking on painting. So the reason I've done a little circle in the middle is we're going to create some heat around a setting sun. So I've got all the hot colours on one side and I've got all the cool colours for shadows on the other side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a little white circle straight at the end of our road and then we're going to create heat using colours around this sun. So if you imagine the sun is a blaring white ball of light and we're going to use things like yellow to emphasize the glow around it. So all I'm doing, I'm using pure cad yellow. I'm not using any other color, just cad yellow, just to create a really harsh glow around my sun. So all I want you to do is just create a white circle and then just block in around it with bright as you can cad yellow, please. So now as the sun gets a little bit cooler either side, and the sky just gets a little bit cool in colour. We're going to add a little bit of orange, so more yellow than orange, please. And the reason we use more yellow is just orange is a bit overpowering, so we just want a little bit of orange. And we're just going to add a tiny bit of brown just to suck a bit of the colour out of the, the mix. So a little bit more orange, there we go. And we're going to create a golden sort of orangey yellow. And all we're going to do is either side of our glowing sun we're just going to make the sky look cooler. So by just using a really nice pastel orangey yellow, we can make it look like the glow from the sun is going across the horizon. And as that sun sets at the base of our road, we get this lovely glow in the sky. So all we're doing, look, we're just blocking it in. We're just trying to create that glow. Now the great thing about having a um, cobalt blue as an outline is if you make sure you let it dry before obviously you paint over the top. As you can see here I'm painting over it and it still is quite clear that you can see it because we're using pastel colours around our um, sun. You can still see these outlines so it's a really really good trick. And the other one is to use chalk where you um, don't want to create harsh outlines. Things like around the sun where I've got this glow. All I've done is I've used chalk, because the great thing about chalk is you can paint over the top and it doesn't leave any marks. So what we're going to do now, we're going to make the sky, um, excuse me, we're going to make the um, glow underneath our sun onto our hills and our road. And we're going to use colour to emphasise heat. So all I'm doing, I'm using this bright orange, you can use, I always use matte orange, but um, you can use cad orange, it's exactly the same. I don't know why... Um, all these names are a bit fancy for me, but really cad orange and matte orange are identical. So all we're going to do, we're just going to use pure orange just underneath our sun, just to create a glow effect. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to go back to the colour we just used in our sky, this colour, this yellowy orange. And we're just going to go underneath the sun and try to create a glow. So all I'm doing while the paint is wet, I'm just gently going over the top of the middle and I'm just blending the yellowy orange into the orange so there's not a harsh jump. And then if you think of the sun as this blaring ball of light, what we're going to do is use bright yellow just underneath it just to really emphasize the glow. So just pure cad yellow and we're just again just gently blending it and we're just trying to create as I say, we're just blocking it in for the time being. We're not going for any detail just yet. We're just trying to create that glow effect. 
And then as the sky gets a little bit cooler, we're going to get more orange and we're going to mix some shadow colours into it. So we're going to make this lavender purple. Now I use iris purple, which is a very bluey purple. Um, I, I appreciate not everyone can get hold of it. So what you can do is use normal purple and add a bit of cobalt blue to your purple. And then add lots and lots and lots of white. So purple, a little bit of cobalt blue and lots and lots and lots of white to get this lavender colour. And then all we're going to do, because it's a bit too cool, we're just going to add a little bit of heat in the orange. So plenty of purple and white. And then we're just going to add a little bit of orange. And that kind of turns the colour into sort of a silver grey. Can you see that? And what the orange does is just add a little bit of heat. So you haven't got this horrible jump between the really bright yellows and then the cooler purples that we're going to use later. So all we're doing, we're just using this really nice sort of silver colour just to sort of blend into that yellowy orange. I'm just going to come down. I think it's a little bit too cool. So what we're going to do, we'll add a little bit more heat to it. We'll add some more orange in a minute. But I'm just going to test it out. Sometimes you've got to test things out on your canvas and take a step back and just kind of see it. So we'll block it in first and then if we have to brighten it up, that's no bother. So I keep want to keep the glow in the middle, but I want to create this cooler sky as we go upwards. So I'm just using this nice silvery color going up into the sky. And as you can see, look, I've painted over some of the clouds. You can still see them. The cobalt blue does its thing. So let's just get plenty of paint. Now everyone keeps asking me what brushes I use here on YouTube. Um, I don't use anything special. I just buy like a multi-pack. I live in London and um, we have a shop in the UK called Hobbycraft. I just buy a, literally a pack that costs £10 and use them. So look, there's me just adding a little bit of heat, just a little bit more orange to the mix. You can see there. And it just gives it a little bit more heat. So as we go, so look, just a little bit more orange. Still lots of purple and white, but just some more orange. And just as we go from the yellow and orange into this more cooler orange it's just for the transition look it just makes the transition not have such a jump so in lots of tutorials i'm just trying to teach you all about how to go from hots to colds or highlights to shadows so just by working on your transition and your blending you can create a lot of realistic work with hardly any detail just the colors so we'll do the same on this side look just to match it so it's all symmetrical yeah, and all I do is buy a multi-pack of um, brushes. But I appreciate um, not everyone lives in the UK and not everyone has access to this shop. So, but you don't need to spend a huge amount. I know a lot of people are very particular about what brand and what um, brush um, they have and things like that. I'm not. I just use whatever comes. I'm very chilled. But if you are particular, that's cool. But, um... Yeah, as I say, I'll put links in the description box to everything I use. If you can get it, as I say, that's a different thing because you might not live where I live. So look, I'm just adding some more yellow and orange just around the middle, just to emphasize the glow. So as that area is now a little bit drier, just by adding a teeny wee bit more paint because it's very hot here in the UK today for once. I'm just mixing some paint as my palette's dried. So look, all I'm doing is I'm just going back through and I'm just doing these sort of rocking back and forth technique with my brush to blend it. And it's just in the center. Look, I just want to create the glow. I want the viewer to focus straight down my road towards this glow of the sun, you see. This is going to be the center point. So now as we go up, we're going to get even more cooler. So if you imagine this area is going to get less sunshine and less heat. So we're just going to mix more purple and white into the mix. So now we're getting even more cooler. We've got less heat. We've got hardly any orange now. We've just got mainly purple and white. We've just got a teeny tiny bit of orange. And all we're going to do is we're just going to go up into the sky. And just blend it downwards creating that sort of X shapes with our brush. As I say, don't worry if you paint over your clouds, we can put them back later. 
to try to get plenty of paint. Sometimes, as you can see here, if you paint with a stained canvas, you might have to use lots and lots of paint, look like this, like a big blob, to get that colour to come out, because the underpainting will shine through, that burnt sienna will shine through. Um, you don't have to paint your canvas burnt sienna, I just do because I find it easier because look, it shows me where I've missed. You can see quite clearly, look, I need to put more paint. I need to have a thicker layer of paint. So that's why I do it, but you don't have to at home. If you want to paint on a white canvas, feel free to do so. So you can see here there's a big jump between purple and orange. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a clean brush, a dry brush. And I'm just going to go back and forth while it's wet and just create my X shapes and just gently blend the two colors together. So really, really easy. Just so there's not a horrible jump in color. We want to make those transitions, remember, really nice and soft. So there we go. We've got our lovely blended sky. How easy was that? So I'm just going to take some orange and add it to my little purple and white mixture. Just going to dry it a little bit and just on the seam I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take some of that orange, purple and white and I'm just going to go upwards and again just to emphasize the glow just around the middle. I just want a little bit more heat. So a good rule of thumb, if you put your hot colours on one side of your palette and your cool colours on the other, see I'm just blending it just to, again to soften it up so there's no horrible streak marks. Then you can sort of mix between the two areas. If you want to heat things up around the sun, you can just use warm colours. And if you want to cool things down in the shade, you can use cool colours. And look, as I say, sometimes with acrylics, they dry a bit flat, they dry a bit um, scruffy. You can just, once your area is dry, look, you can just go over the top and you can highlight areas. So just by going over the top here with the yellow, I can make it extremely bright and vibrant just by giving it a second layer. And if you get some of the outline, look, don't worry, don't fret. You can always just dry it with a hairdryer and just repaint over the top. So if you get any of that cobalt blue um, shining through, just dry it and go over the top and it will disappear. So now we're going to work on the clouds. So we're going to get some of that yellow and orange that we mixed. And if you think the clouds, just like the um, sky, are going to be very bright around the sun, and especially this base of this cloud, this base of this cloud is going to be picking up that whole velocity from the sun. It's going to be extremely bright. So we're just going to use colors again to show that. So we're using some yellow and orange first. And a bit like the glow from the sky below on the road, we're going to do the same in the clouds. So now we're going to go to orange. So we're just going to blend that into the mix. So if you think of a color wheel or a rainbow, we're going from yellow to orange. And then as it gets cooler, we can add a little bit of pink. So yellow, orange to pink. So yellow, orange, pink. And it's getting even darker. Get a little bit of brown again, just to suck a bit of the vibrancy out. Brown's really good to making things look very neutral. So if you ever paint in things that are pastel, you really want to make something nice and pastel. Um, add a little bit of brown to your color, and it makes it sucks a bit of the color out and makes it look nice and pastel and wispy. So there we go. So we've got a bit of pink now. And then as we get even darker, if you think again of the color wheel, we're going to add a little bit more shadow. So we're going to add a little bit of purple. So look, it's getting darker, cooler. And we're going to add a tiny bit of pink and a little bit of brown. So purple, pink, and brown. And again, we're going to make a nice pastel color. And we're just going to create a shadow color now. And we're going to put back all our clouds. So just to create the glow around this one. Don't worry if it looks a little bit cartoony to start with. We can fix all that later as we move along in the tutorial. We just want to start to work on the transitions again. 
And the great thing about acrylics, if you don't like the shape of your clouds, I will teach you later in the tutorial how to change the shape and how to add holes and make them look much more realistic. Because I know a lot of people struggle when they learn how to paint clouds. So I will teach you little really super easy tricks in the tutorial that you can just make them look much more realistic later on. But first we just want to block her in. So as you can see, like you've got this nice glow under the sun, sorry, above the sun. And then we're just going to use this nice purpley color that we've made just in the clouds around it. Because these clouds, if you think, are going to be more in the shadow. So they're going to be more in the shade. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that purple to emphasize that. So take your time. I zoom out so you can see the bigger picture now. So we're just going to get some more purple and brown and pink. I'm just going to make it a little bit cooler. I'm actually not going to add any pink. I'm going to add a tiny bit of blue, just a tiny bit. Because I want it a little bit more greyer. Because as I say, if you think these clouds are going to be a bit more in the shade. So there we go. So some cool purple. So purple and cobalt blue and a little bit of brown. If it's too dark, remember you can always add a little bit of white if you want to lighten it up. But that looks nice. That's like a sort of cool grey, isn't it? So now we've got that colour, we're going to use that to block in the other clouds. We've got our faint outline that we can see, so we can use that just to create odd shapes. So we're just going to create some dark clouds fading off into the distance. So really easy. Just take your time, and just block it in with that colour. So you can have one sort of coming diagonally now. So I'm just filling in the outline that we created earlier. So let's have one in this corner just to frame the piece. And then another one here. Okay, so we've got this nice blocked in sky. But the clouds look a bit ropey and look a bit cartoony so what we're going to do we're going to neaten everything up now and just make them look more realistic so i'm just going to mix some purple and some brown together obviously you could put a little bit blue at home if you haven't got iris purple and what we're going to do i'm going to teach you how to make your clouds look a little bit more realistic so all i'm doing is i'm going over the top just to give it a second layer of paint so i'm just using quite a thick amount of paint first and then once I've blocked it in, I can then create the shapes around it. So look, I can create little bits breaking away from it. And I can go around the edges and just fluff them up, just using less paint. So to make your clouds look a bit more real, if you just block them in first with the, the core color, and then look, if you go around them and just create little bits breaking away with less paint. So look, if I do it here, just have little, little smidges, little splats, just coming off so look if we block in the main main bit and then just around the edges if we just ease up on the pressure and just make them look all nice and marshmallowy and you can have little bits look just breaking away and as you see on one it doesn't look anything special but if we do that on all of them it just makes them look so much more realistic so look if we do another one so what we're going to do if you imagine they're floating through the air so we'll block it in first. So let's cover it in the paint and then just have a little bit sort of breaking away as it floats through the air. And then just make all these sort of edges nice and wispy. So I'm pushing, look, I'm pushing hard down to block it in on the canvas. But then as I get to the edges, look, I just really ease up on the pressure and I'm barely touching the edges of the clouds. So look. So we just have loads of little bits breaking off from the main bit. It's a really easy technique. So that you can just have little tiny bits breaking away. 
as I say, the more you do, the more it all sort of adds up together. So you don't want it just on one. So what I tend to do is I have all the clouds going across at the horizon and as they go up into the sky, kind of make them go off sort of diagonally and that kind of makes it look like they're fading off into the distance where you've got the, the curve of the, the, the globe. It kind of makes them look like they're sort of spinning round. So look, I'm pushing really hard to block it in, look, push down really hard. And then when I want to make sort of the bits all fluffy in, I just look, I just barely touch the canvas and just dot little splats. So I've got this nice little residue coming off. And it, that just makes all the little breakaway bits. So as you can see, look, now we've done a few, you can see it all coming together, it's starting to look more realistic. If you look at the one below it, look how terrible that looks compared to one just with these little fluffy edges and breakaway parts. So as I say, take your time, there's no rush. If you're ever watching the short tour at home and it goes a bit too fast, just pause it and then you can come back to it. So that's looking all cool. Look, we've got all these bits breaking away now. So what we're going to do, we're going to outline with the same color this edge here. So this edge, if you imagine, it's not getting as much sunlight. So that's why it's, it's nice and silhouetted. And again, look, we're just going to do the breakaway technique. So we're just going round the cloud, just giving it a nice harsh silhouette. And again, look, you can just ease up on the pressure so if you want to block in areas, just push down really hard so you get nice thick paint. And if you want to sort of blend it as it comes towards the light, look, you can just ease up. So I still think it looks a little bit too cartoony in the middle here. So I think we'll sort that in a minute. I'm just going to block these in a little bit darker just so it frames the painting. I just want the corners nice and dark with those clouds. So it looks like it's fading out of shot. Just make this a little bit more harsh. And this one here, why not? That one, there we go. So it's looking fab. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some crimson now. I'm just gonna make a little bit of heat. So I'm just gonna mix some crimson into that dark mix and some pink. So crimson, pink, a little bit of purple, blue and brown. And we're going a little bit more orange I'm just going to mix it all together to try and make a sort of, still a grey, but more a crimsony grey, more warmer grey. still think it looks a bit too boring, so I'm just going to put some blue and brown into it. You're basically adding heat, that's the easiest way to say it. I'm just going to add a little bit more white to make it more grey. So let's test it down here, so it's this crimsony grey but I still think it looks a bit too boring so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of cobalt blue just to make it darker a little bit of brown let's try that let's try mixing it all together so we'll test it out on the palette that looks okay so what we want to do we're just trying to get more purpley and more warmer so hence the fact we've got a little bit of orange a little bit of pink and a little bit of crimson. So we're trying to add heat. So we're trying to go from the really dark shadow color to this sort of bridge color, which is a little bit hotter because it's got some orange and crimson. So we're just going to use that on the base of this cloud because this would be getting the sunlight just on its sort of bum area, its sort of base. And then as we come down into the cloud, it will get more sunlight and get more brighter in color. So what we want to do is hotten up the tone just by adding a little bit more heat so I'm just gonna put some heat here just really subtly I don't want to put loads so we're just gonna add some more orange to emphasize the heat and a little bit of pink just to null it down a tiny bit of white a little bit of purple so we should get this tanny brown color and what the white and the purple does is just nullify it, makes it a little bit more bland. So it's kind of like a, a tan color. 
And again, look, we're just trying to make the transitions look softer by just blending it, you see? Just, we haven't got these huge jumps in colour. So as I say, take your time. Don't worry if it's not super perfect. We just want to kind of get from the dark shadows and the cool colours into the hot, warm, highlighted colours. So again, just mix some of that yellow and orange that we use for the background sky. And again, look, I'm just trying to blend it in. I'm just trying to create the heat on that base of that cloud. So just like we've done in below in the... Um, the hills and the mountains we want to do the exact same in the in the clouds so look I'm just add a tiny bit more orange to the mix so just to create this light and glow effect on these clouds you see and a little bit more orange so again just so the transitions look really smooth look just blending taking my time there's no rush Look at that, that creates a sort of really lovely light. And by just look, just mixing a little bit of heat into the darker shade, you can just create an in-between, like a bridge tone. And look, you can just, again, just make the transitions look like that heat is just coming around that cloud, just so there's not such a big jump. Again, I know it's repetitive, but it's just the same technique over and over and over again. Now look, my sun was a bit ropey, so now she's dry. We can look, we could just make a nice big white circle here. So we've got this big focus point at the end of our road. So we've got this lovely big sun. And then what we can do, we can use cad yellow. If you your sun isn't circular, you can use cad yellow to outline it. But this is the trick that I was telling you about. This is how you can make your clouds look super realistic by poking holes in them. So I'm using the cad yellow because around the sun is going to be this extremely bright sky. And I'm using a little um, flat headed brush or you could use a fine liner. And all I'm doing is just using that bright cad yellow to poke holes around my clouds. And then you can mix some of the yellow and orange that we used previously. So it was yellow, orange, and a tiny bit of brown to make that background sky around the clouds. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of purple in it just to make it a little bit lighter. And look, you can do the same trick as you go up into the clouds. So all you want to do is just match the sky colour that we used earlier. And you can do the exact same trick. So look, just making with a fine liner little holes and divots. And you can even change all the shape of the clouds. Sometimes when you're this zoomed in, your clouds look really cool. And then when you take a step back, you might not like them. So a good rule of thumb is to always just take a step back from your work every so often. A is good for you just to get up and moving. But B, you can see your work when you're when you're really close to a subject, you can't see the um, how realistic it looks. So if there's ever a little pause in the video, that's me getting up and just taking a step back. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just poking little holes. Now we've got that transition, and we've got the colour down to a T. This bit's really easy. If anyone watches my previous tutorials, this is what we do with things like um, when we're painting trees and leaves. You can poke bits of sky colour in to create the realism. And obviously if you've, you've got a dark cloud and when you paint these little holes in, you've still got some of the background color shining through, you can just, again, just dry it with a hairdryer, just wait till it dries and then just give it a second coat of paint and that'll get rid of it. So that's looking much more realistic. They're looking fab. So I've got this really nice sky and now we're gonna do the same sort of transition on our faraway mountains. So we're gonna get some orange and some cool purple so this Irish purple and some white and we're going to mix this nice sort of beigey tan color now so less harsh and the reason we're using less harsh colors is because we want to push these faraway mountains off into the background so this could be a big canyon or something 
So all we're doing, we're just trying to create this nice, warm sort of edge. Because it's near the sun, just like our clouds and just like this glow, we want it nice and warm, hence the orange. And then as we go to the middle, it's just like the clouds, it's going to get cooler. So we're going to use some of this cool purple. And we're just going to mix the two in together. So plenty of purple. So purple and blue, if you haven't got iris purple, into the mix. So look, so it's more lavender. And we're just going to blend that into the orange. And just move towards the left. So just be gentle, just look. Just blend it into the orange. You could be a professional and use your finger like me. <laughs> and then as we move towards the left, this area is going to be a bit more in the shade because it's further away from the sun, so it's going to be cooler. So we're going to use purple and brown. So purple and brown. A little bit of cobalt blue. I had cerulean blue here on my palette, but we didn't actually use it today. So we're just going to use some of that. Now I think this is a bit too light. I think it needs to be darker. But what we'll do, we'll block it in and then we'll dry it. Because sometimes when you dry acrylics, they do dry a lot darker. So we'll dry it and we'll see if it's... Yeah, I think it's too light. So what we're going to do, we're just going to darken this area up. So I'm just going to add more purple and more brown. There we go, it's a lot darker. A little bit more cobalt blue. So a little bit of black, just a tiny bit of black, just a dot. So there we go. Because it's got more cobalt blue and purple in it now, still got a hint of brown, a little dot of black. We're using pastel colours, so cobalt blue is fantastic for pushing things back into the distance. So if you're ever painting something and you've got things really far in the distance, like mountains, cobalt blue is fantastic for pushing things back and making them look like they're far away. So all I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to take the middle colour that we mixed. So that was purple, a little bit of orange, and some white. So some more silver colour. Look, I'm just going to create a bridge between the really dark, harsh coolness and the really bright highlights. So look, I'm just going back and forth with the two shades, and I'm just doing my X shapes. Look, back and forth, back and forth, like rocking a baby. Rocking back and forth, look, look at that. And you just blend it. So again, the transition looks natural. And you can do the same look with the hot colour, just clean your brush. My colour is dried, so I'm just going to mix it again. So orange and white and a little purple. So orange, white and a little purple. Let's just book it back in. And then we're just going to do the same technique. We're just going to blend it in just so the transition there isn't a huge jump between the cools and the hots. So if we just go back to the previous colour. Just going to add a little bit more heat, just a bit more orange. There we go. Just so it looks like it's glowing in that sunlight. We'll just gently blend it here in the middle. So that's what I'm saying. Take your time. Experiment. Sometimes when you do something first, it just doesn't work. So you sometimes just need to take your time and just change things up. There's nothing wrong with that. So if you're painting along at home and things don't work out, just pause the video and just take your time. So there we go. We've got this lovely sky and we've got these lovely blended mountains that look nice and far back. So we're going to block in these sort of terrain areas either side of our road and we're going to block in our road now. So to bring things forward, like my hand to show you towards the camera, you can use darker colours. So if anyone's watched any of the previous tutorials, we only use black here in the foreground, so right at the bottom of our painting. And the reason we do that is black is really, really harsh. It kind of engulfs all the other colours. But what it does is it brings things really close towards you. So if you look at our faraway mountains, because they're like more pastel, they look like they're far off into the distance. Can you see that? But this black, what it does is it brings whatever's, because um, it's so harsh, it brings it right forward. It looks like it's right close to the viewer. Almost like you're standing on this road looking out into the distance, which is the whole point. So what we're going to do, we're going to use black right at the bottom of our painting to frame the corners 
and obviously bring this road towards the viewer. So if you can, just use quite a big brush and get plenty of, I'm using ivory black, but you can use Mars black. We just want a really, really harsh black, no other color in the bottom corners just to frame your painting. So there we go, we've got it nice and blocked in. That's really cool. So we've got this really nice push background and we've got this really harsh road. And as we move towards the light, we wanna get less harsh. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix some black and cobalt blue and a little bit of brown. So a little bit of black, plenty of brown and plenty of cobalt blue. So it looks on my palette and here on my canvas, it looks not that much difference, but it's a lot more bluer in real life. If you were seeing it in real life, it's got a lot more cobalt blue. And all we're gonna do, we're just gonna blend it into the black. So we've still got this dark shadow color. So plenty of cobalt blue, some black and some burnt umber brown and just blend it as we come down into the black. Now I'm just gonna freestyle the road today. I'm just gonna pay it freehand. You can if you're nervous about creating a triangle as we move up towards the surface here. You can if you want to use tape. So you can put tape along your lines and you'll get a nice straight edge. So I'm just gonna mix some purple and some brown to create this nice gray. And again, we're getting less harsh as we move towards the sun in color. So by adding purple and brown, you can add a little bit of white. You just want to kind of create a warm gray. So again, as we move towards the sunlight, we're trying to emphasize the light coming down the road. So we're just using this nice warm gray. So as I say, if, if you add purple and brown together, if it's a bit harsh, just add a little bit of white, not too much, just a little bit. So we're just gonna match it here. Just gently create our X shapes and blend it. There we go. So as I say, just like the clouds, it's always the same techniques. So again, as we move towards the sun, we're gonna put more purple and white and a little bit of heat. So we're gonna add some pink, just a tiny bit of pink. So purple, white, and a little bit of pink. So purple, white, and pink. And we're gonna add some more heat in the orange. So now our gray is getting even more warmer. So if you think of the tarmac, so the surface of the road, it's getting more gray and warmer. So look, and again, look, just while it's all wet, we're just blending it so there's not a huge jump in the colors. Just come down with our X shapes. Same here. So that we're just blending back and forth, back and forth. So easy. And then because we've got that dark color underneath, look, you can you can come down into it. We'll create some shimmer on that road in a minute. So we're just making it lighter at the top here. Just by giving it a second coat of paint. Just coming down. Go. That's looking nice. That's looking really cool. So I like that effect. Just going to get some of the lighter grey. Just gently just give it a sort of glazing. I'm not going to colour it all in. I'm going to let some of that orange just I know it looks scruffy but we're gonna put the glow back in in a minute with the orange so all I want is just a hint of grey underneath it just so the viewer can see a little bit of the road 
but the sun will engulf it, all the light will engulf the end of the road. And then all I'm doing, look, I'm just using that light grey and I'm just going to create some shimmer coming down the road. So I'm just trying to create sort of a light effect on the tarmac. So if you wait till your painting's dry, this is actually a little bit easier. If you just dry your work and you just go over the top, a bit like when we do sunbeams in the tutorials. All I'm doing, I'm just, I've got a dry brush, I'm just sort of glazing over the top with hardly any paint. And I'm just coming down sort of diagonally and I'm just creating the hint of a little sort of shimmer of light coming down the road. So look, if you've got hardly any paint, it's not too harsh. So here we go, just creating some of this little shimmer of light coming down. What we'll do is we'll add all the detail on the top, but it's just like the clouds and the sky. We want to block everything in first. So by creating this sort of shimmer and things, when we put the sort of detail like the lines and everything over the top, it will all come together. And I want to leave this left hand corner quite dark because I want to sign it here. So right at the end I'll darken it up a bit, but I just want to put the shimmer on first. It's kind of hard here at the bottom of the painting. My easel's getting in the way. So just coming down towards the corners, trying to come sort of diagonally, sort of with the shape of the road, and a bit of blocking the middle. I forgot to do the middle. So just again, so all the blending and the light matches. And again, just here in the middle, just so it looks all the same. Come down to the base of the painting. There we go, nice and blended with that lovely shimmer on the tarmac. So we've got this really nice road, and what we're going to do, we're going to um, start doing the underpainting and all the transitions here, and do exactly the same with the terrain at either side of the road. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same trick. We're going to use really harsh black at the base here. And as we go nearer towards the sun and the mountains, we're going to use a lighter colour. So I'm going to go right up, but I'm going to leave a gap because I want to use a lighter colour as we move towards the mountains to push it back. So these, if you imagine the terrain either side of this road, is going to be really close to us. So that's why we're using black. So when we put some grass and stuff either side, so we're going to have some really dark terrain here but as we get closer towards that sun and the mountain not only is it going to get heat we want it to look far away so we're going to use the lighter shades so we're going to do the same trick again we're going to mix some blue and brown and black just like previously so if yours is dry just remix it so blue, <laughs> blue brown and black and then all we're going to do as we move towards the sun just going to blend it into that black look. Leave a gap as you get closer to the mountains. Same on the other side to make it nice and symmetrical. So there we go. Easy peasy. And then as we get closer to the mountains, we want to use less of a harsh colour. So I'm just going to do this corner here. If you're very nervous about keeping your road nice and straight and, and nice um, as a triangle, you can always use painting tape. So if you're very nervous um, and you want a nice straight road, just use some painting tape and you can make your road nice and straight. So I'm just going to get some purple to the mix, that cool purple. So you can use purple and cobalt blue. And all I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to create a little divide between those mountains. So this is the terrain far off into the distance, hence the cobalt blue that I was saying earlier. And we're just going to blend that all together. See how that works? So it looks like it's fading away. 
And we're going to do the same on the other side. Again, it's always the same techniques. Same transition. Just so all the colours match. And then as we get nearer to the sun, we're going to mix some of the colour we used for our mountains, which was purple, white, and a little bit of orange. So purple, a little bit of brown as well. So purple, white, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of orange. Just a smidge of orange. And we're just going to create this sort of really warm grey here. And so a lot of this we're going to cover up with that orange glow, but we just want the underpainting all to match first. If you think of it like a foundation to a house, we want to make sure everything is perfect. So when we put the highlights and the detail over the top, all the little bits and bobs, everything comes together. So all these little stages are really, really important. So there we go, we've got these nice cool mountains. And then all I'm going to do, look, I'm just, while it's wet, I'm just going to blend it again. Just going back and forth, just gently blending it. Don't worry if it's not too blended, because we're going to put some long grass and terrain over the top. So it will look like texture anyway. We just want to kind of blend it, just so it's not a huge jump. So there we go, so we've got the underpainting all done. So we've got this terrain either side. And we've got this sort of light shimmer coming down our road. So what we're going to do now, we're going to swap it to a fan brush. Now a fan brush is hence the name. And we're going to load up some black. And the great thing about a fan brush is it's got these fan bristles. So what you can do is you can either go upright or across. And you can create texture. So all I'm doing, I'll zoom in for you in a minute. All I'm doing is trying to create the illusion of long grass and by using black I'm trying to cut holes in the background colour to look, here we go, if I zoom in for you, do the other side I'm trying to create the illusion of long grass so by creating all these really dark lines it just adds to texture so if you imagine, I don't know, some long grass either side of the road All I'm doing, I'm just using the edge, the corner edge of that brush. And you can do it upright if you want to create really long grass. Last week on the tutorial we did the long grass, didn't we? So same technique. So there we go, look, I'm just leaving gaps in the underpainting. So all this grass and terrain just is a bit interesting. It's not just flat and boring. So again, just as we get closer to the sun, we're going to use the less harsh colour. So the one that was blue, brown and black. So blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of black. So it's not as harsh. And we're just going to do the same technique. So look, we're just going to create some terrain. Just some bubbles. As I say, you don't really have to make any detail. We just want to create the illusion of detail. So all we're doing, we're just using a darker, harsher colour just to imply like far off grass and fields. And if we've done it one side, we're going to do it on the other side. And even look, you can put some little divots on your mountain. So this could be some terrain on the mountain. We don't want to go O2T, we just want to create the illusion of detail. There we go. So now we've got it all blocked in, we've got all this nice texture. We're going to get some sap green, and we're just going to I'm going to show you how you can use sap green to create bright highlights and cool shadows. So if I make three piles, we've got normal sap green in the middle, and by adding yellow to the top one, so we're going to add yellow, catch yellow and a little bit of orange, so cad, yellow, orange and sap green. We can create a warm colour. Don't worry, I'll zoom in for you in a minute so you can all see it. And then at the bottom, if we add sap green and cobalt blue, so sap green and cobalt blue, 
we can create a darker shade. And we've got normal sap green in the middle, which I'm going to add a little bit of brown just to make it a little bit darker. Don't know if we'll use it, we'll, we'll test it. But we've got a lighter shade, which is green, yellow and orange. And then cobalt blue and green. And you can add a little bit of brown if you want to, is the darker shade. So we're going to clean our fan brush and go back to our fan brush. And in here where we've got the black, we're going to use the cooler shade. So if you just think logically and think, well, look, these bits of grass are in the shade, aren't they? Look, they're really far away from the sun. So by using the sap green and cobalt blue, we're going to use a muted darker shadow green. So we're going to do the same technique. And we're using the bristles of those fan brush to create long grass. So fan brush is fantastic. You can pick them up in a shop for literally a dollar or a pound. They are super cheap. You don't need an expensive one. You just need the actual right shape. And all I'm doing, I'm going across with it just to create the illusion of faraway fields. So I'm just going across with it. So now we've got the texture in our underpainting by just going look across it just looks like they're fading out into the distance and then if you want to create long grass in the foreground you can just tap your brush upright just so it's nice and thin and upright and you can create the illusion of long grass in the foreground so so what i'm doing look, i'm just going upright with the brush i'm just trying to create texture and then if i want to create sort of fields off in the distance i just turn the brush horizontal so now we've got it vertical look i'm just going upright we're just creating these nice long grass and then if i want to go horizontal look and go across you can create the illusion of these fading off fields into the distance there we go we've got some of that texture shining through and then we're going to get some of the warm colour, which was yellow, orange and sap green. And all we're going to do, we're going to put some highlights. So if you imagine this area around the sun, it's going to be much more warmer, hence the warm colour. So we're just going to put some highlights and this is going to be all the bits of grass that are picking up rays of the sun. So again, now we've got that dark colour on. We can use these highlights for the top just to create a nice composition so I'm trying to leave plenty of the dark black underneath to shine through so again it keeps it texturized so around the sun's going to be really bright isn't it So just going upright. Trying to create this long spinally glass. <laughs> I can't talk today. Grass on glass. I rest assured you I haven't been drinking. So there we go. It's a nice long grass here in the foreground. And then we're just going to go across. So look, you can dab it and create these little ridges. It's almost like a comb. So you can just go across. This could be all sort of light shining on these faraway fields. It could be a crop or something off in the distance, couldn't it? See, I always try to choose tutorials that people can relate to. So no matter where you live, everyone loves sunsets, everyone's out on the open road. In London, there'd be traffic everywhere and buses. <laughs> Not so much like an open field like this. So I'm just going to add some more white to the mix. So I'm just going to add some more white to that mix. 
tiny bit of yellow. I'm just going to make an extremely bright highlight now. So again, same technique, just making little divots. So again, for perspective, what we're doing, we're trying to make the grass longer as it comes towards the viewer. So I'm just trying to make it look like it's getting longer, it's nearer to the viewer. It's a little trick, just to create a little bit of perspective. And again, all this bright colour, this bright yellowy white, what it is, it's just, it's just all the sunlight sort of glaring off at certain little bits of long grass. So we're just going to come up here. Sometimes you get big blobs as the paint comes off quite thickly off your brush. You can use a really fine fine liner. So you'll see in a minute I make a mistake and I get a big blob of paint. Because my brush, it was drying really quick. So look, there you go, there's a big blob there. But the good thing is, look, if you've got a dry underpainting, look, you can just use a baby wipe or a wet bit of kitchen roll. And you can just wipe it off. And then what you can do, look, if you get a bit of a smear and it looks all muddled and it all sort of blurs together, you can just use some of the dark colours, like the black and the dark bluey brown, and just punch some holes back in, so don't worry. If you ever make a mistake, just relax. Just repaint it, it's not it's no bother. All I'm doing that just re putting some some of the texture back in. And then look, just putting the highlights back in. So you never know. Because a lot of painting you don't do things necessarily first time, as I say, you've got to rework areas. It's, it's taking a step back and just seeing what works and what doesn't. So now look, we're in a bit of a flow now. We can load up our brush. Just put some long long grass here in the foreground. So it's looking cool. It looks like the sun is shining off the tips of the leaves and the long grass. So again, we're just making the grass shorter as it moves towards the sun. You see, just got some faint outlines. A lot of this we're gonna cover up. But as I say, it's good to lay this foundation because all these little details do show up in the final final bit. Now I'm just getting some black and I'm just going underneath here in the foreground this long grass just so there's a little bit of separation between the road and the grass just so it doesn't look as flat. So again, sometimes with acrylics you just have to give things two coats of paint. So even black dries quite matte, it dries quite flat. So if you want to make it even darker, you can always just go over it a second time later on. So it looks really dark now because it's wet. But as it dries, it dries a bit flat. Just going to use a really thin brush and you see some blue and brown just here. So we've got this nice texturized painting. So please dry your work before we do the next stage. So it's a bit like the sunbeams in the previous tutorials. What we're going to do, we're going to create light. We've got a clean, dry brush. And we're going to take some of the bright orange. What we're going to do, we're going to wipe away 90% of the paint. We've got a dry, really soft bristle brush. And all we're going to do is sort of go over the top and sort of color in this area in our bright orange. So use a dry brush, make sure your painting is nice and dry, use a bit of kitchen towel and then just literally wipe away 90% of the paint. So you've just got a chalky residue and what we're going to do, we're just going to create a glow around the sun. So the great thing is, is now we've got that texturized background, even though we're putting the orange on top, some of it will shine through. So a bit like our clouds earlier when we had the outline, that texture won't be too lost. You can still see it. So all I'm doing, I'm just gently pushing down. And I'm just glazing over the top and I'm just going to create some sunbeams coming up down the road. 
So this is bits of light coming down the road. So we've got this lovely glow, this orange glow of light. So as I say, the brush is really, really soft. You can use a blender brush. Just try to have a really soft to the touch bristle brush. And all I'm doing, I'm just glazing over the top. So I'm just trying to create that glow. I'm just gently letting the paint run out. Oops. So either side, just try to create an even glow. If it's bigger on one side, just try to even it up on the other side. So again, we're just going to create some sunbeams coming down. Just so it looks like this blazing light is coming all the way down our road. Just letting the paint roll off the brush. Same on this side, just as a bit more even. Excellent. That's looking fan dabby dozy. So we're going to do the same with some yellow now. So we're going to go underneath the sun. We've got some CAD yellow. We've wiped away 90% of the paint. And we're just going to create the glow effect around the sun. So I'm just going either side of the sun. I'm just using some CAD yellow just to glaze on top of that orange. And then just to create a nice blend, I'm just going back to the orange and a tiny bit of yellow and I'm just blending the two colours together now. So again, even in the glow, the transition is really nice and natural. So I keep saying to you, it's the same techniques over and over again. We're going to lay the foundation then we're going to put some of the detail and then we're going to put the highlights over the top. So again, with acrylics, look, if your, if your glow dries a bit bland and it dries a bit um, flat, just go over it a second time, exactly the same colours, make it more vibrant. Sometimes when you're doing this trick, because the underpainting is quite harsh underneath, you might just have to paint it twice. You might just have to do the glow twice just to make it that vibrant so just off camera I'm just mixing some yellow and white and all I'm doing I'm just going around the Sun just to create again just a sort of a sort of halo around the Sun so just a little bit of yellow and white and I'm just gonna make my Sun a bit more circular where we put this glow in it's kind of lost a bit of the sun, so I'm just going down here. Just making it a bit more circular. There we go. So we're going to get some white, and we're going to get some orange. So lots of white and a little bit of orange. And we're going to make this sort of pastel orange now. I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow, just a tiny bit. So predominantly white with a little bit of orange and a dot of yellow and what we're going to do we're going to do some of the lines so we're going to do some of the, the markings on the road so what i'm going to do i'm going to come down and create a straight line coming down from that central middle and we can have the road sort of curling round why not fading off in underneath the sun And then I'm going to create another line, sort of coming off diagonally from this one in the middle. Again, just to create the perspective. So we're a bit zoomed in now, but I'll show you in a minute when we zoom out. Again, if you've not got a steady hand, you can't really paint straight lines, you can always dry your painting and use tape. So the good thing about tape is you can create really good straight lines. So you can line up a outline and just put tape either side of the edge and then just fill out the gaps in between uh, there's another tutorial on a road that we did a couple of months back that's in the landscape playlist um, which has the use of tape to create perspective in a road so if anyone wants to watch that tutorial there's a great tutorial with how to use tape 
to create straight lines. So again, if you're worried about it, just line up some tape. But if you're confident, you can always try to do freehand. Painting freehand is really good because it makes you get better at it. Um, a lot of people shake, a lot of people get a bit nervous. So the more you do it, the less nervous you get and the more steady your hand you'll get. So look, if I zoom out for you so you can see, we're just trying to create the perspective with these road markings. And the reason we're using the orange and white is just to create, again, some heat from the sun. So look, if it dries a bit flat, you can always go over it twice. And then we're just trying to create some road markings either side. Do you know you get these sort of little dividing lines? So we're just going to put them in. Have it to about here, I reckon. And the reason I'm not going to go all the way to the corner is because we're going to use a cooler colour in the corners. So we're going to use a bit of purple and white in the corners. So the reason we're using this orange and white predominantly is because these are still going to be quite warm in the sun. And then we're going to mix some of that lavender colour. So do you remember it was purple and white? And you're mixing it at home it's purple a little bit cobalt blue and white predominantly white so to get this pastel color and again I'm just making the the lines longer as they come towards the viewer again to create the perspective so when I move my chubby hand you should see that this line see in the corner is a lot longer and they get smaller as they get towards the Sun so again let's make this one quite big going off the painting to create the perspective and then while I've got that color I'm just gonna go over the top just here at the bottom and just make it a bit cooler these lines I don't want to use just white because the problem with white it will make it look a bit cartoony so by using the purple and the white it just makes it look it's a bit more in the shade so again, just make the bottom of the painting cooler so it all matches the light. Same here, just in the middle, just blending it into the orange. And then all I'm doing, I'm just using some of the um, warm grey that we use. I'm just using a fine liner just to put some slight gaps in between the road markings. Really, really tiny, you can barely see them. Again, just to create a perspective. So again, they're getting closer as they get towards the sun and they're getting further apart in the road markings. So it should look again in perspective. And then if you dry your work again before you attempt to do this, all we're doing now we've put the road markings in, we're just going to put back the glow. And what it should do again, just like the um, texture in our grass either side, it should shine through the glow you see so look now we're putting the glow on top you still can see the fine detail you still can see those road markings let's say so i'm just trying to make it all symmetrical so this side's a little bit more of a glow on the right so we'll have to make the left a little bit more even so let's put more of a glow now on the left so i'm trying to make it even either side Just going over the top of those road markings and then you can have a little bit on the edge of that mountain because obviously that mountain would be getting all the heat and the same on this mountain so i'm just going to shade over the top there we go just smudge it with my finger and then the same with the clouds so look just so that glow all matches just glazing over the top of that cloud just so the heat everything matches and look if you get it on the sky don't worry you can paint over that we can just mix some of the sky color it's more so all the light matches and then while that's drying I'm just going over the top with my pure black just here on the edges so a lot of a key saying to you is just reworking areas if you've put something in or it's dried flat just go back, take your time, rework it. 
I'm just going to darken up the corners a little bit. Just put some little bits of stones and pebbles. I'm going to really try to darken up this left hand corner because that's obviously where um, we're going to sign it. So I always try to make my left corner very dark. So then when I sign my signature, I normally sign in white. We've got a nice contrast and the signature signs up against the dark background. So I'm just putting some little bubbles in the tarmac. Now I'm still not very happy with my clouds, so I'm just going to make the, the sky a little bit more prominent. I'm just going to poke some more holes in them. I'm just going to make the cloud a little bit smaller. So as I was saying, if you've, if you've glazed over top and your glow's sticking out a bit and it's a bit scruffy, you can always just mix some of the yellow and orange that we used earlier and just rework areas in your clouds. So I'm just getting rid of some of the cloud a little bit and just poking some more holes. You can see there just in the middle, there's an area that I've gone over on and you can still see it. So as I say, look, just like here, if you have to give it a second layer of paint, don't worry about that, that's quite normal. It's just the darker shade, look here, it's still shining through of that bit of cloud. So look, if you have to give it two layers of paint, just dry it and go over the top till it disappears. Now please dry your work if you're going to attempt the next stage. I'm going to take some white with a tiny dot of yellow but predominantly white. And because my painting is nice and dry, I'm going to create sunbeams. So we're going to wipe away 90% of the paint. I'm just trying to find a clean bit of my paper. And all we're going to do is come out diagonally from the sun. So we're just going to, just like we did with the glazing of the orange on the road, we're just doing the same with some white and a tiny dot of yellow. Now the reason if you dry your painting, if you muck this up and you create a wonky sunbeam or something goes wrong, you can just use a baby wipe and just wipe it away. Or even if you just don't like it. So you can attempt this and if you don't like it, if it looks a bit cartoony or you just think you don't fancy it, you can always just use a baby wipe and your underpainting will still be there. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating some sunbeams coming out from the centre of sun. So I've got hardly any paint on a dry brush. Just going really gently onto the canvas, hardly pushing down. We're just letting that chalky, tiny bit of paint flow off the brush onto the rivets of the canvas. So it's very chalky. It's almost like a nice impression. It's not so much paint that it creates a really thick line. And then just coming from the central sun just brighten it up just putting a tiny bit more yellow on the edges just a tiny bit of yellow so the nearer to the sun it's a bit more white and just on the outskirts of the edges of the sunbeams it gets a little bit more cool and a bit more yellow so there we go and then look if you've changed something you can just put your glow back in so if you've made it a bit scruffy or we've put in some sunbeams we can just rework areas so it's a lot of paint and you just got to go back and forth back and forth whatever you rework if you change something you just got to go rework it so just put me orange back in just so that glow all matches can even have it look coming on that mountain just so it looks like that sunlight's streaming into the mountain there we go just super gentle and then what you can do you can do this trick again where you can put the sunbeams a bit behind the clouds so you can have some beam forward some beam behind the clouds we recently did a tutorial didn't we with uh, color by felix that we did this trick so what we did was we had some of the sunbeam in front of the cloud and some behind it. And again, it just creates a realism. So what I'm doing, I'm just using some of the, the yellow and orange that we used and some of the purple just for the hour land. I'm just repainting back in the cloud. So I want that bits of the sunbeam 
some of it poking through, some of it behind the clouds. Just as a nice mixture. So just by filling in with the same colours that we used previously. Look, you can just put some of it behind, some of it in front. So that looks cool. It's a really easy technique. And we just get some yellow, just poke some holes back in our clouds. So I'm not going to go too photorealistic today because I want to make the tutorial quite short. But you can do every last detail, as I say. So, look, and then we just put the sunbeam back in. And then where it's going through the cloud, now we know what areas it goes through. Look, we can just make it brighter. Straight through that cloud. And just have really sharp light in between it. So predominantly white and a little bit of yellow and you get that glow Fill my sun back in so what I'm doing is using more white and yellow just here as it joins into the sun and then I'm just glazing over the top with some of that warm orange and then while this is all drying we can multitask so we'll put our sunbeams in a little bit brighter in a second but we don't want to keep mushing it all together so we're going to let this area dry for a second and while that's drying as you can see look our grass looks a bit flat so we can get some of that black and we can just use a fine liner and we can just create some texture just here in the foreground while all our clouds are drying so what I'm doing, look, I'm just punching some holes using some bright black. Just to create some definition in our long grass. As I say, I don't want to go like really detailed. It's still a quite an easy tutorial. But all I'm doing, look, I'm just using some jet black and I'm just creating some terrain in our fields in the far distance. And then we'll do the same the other side. So we're just going to make this a bit darker. But it's all starting to come together. As I say, if, you, if you're following along at home, if you just try to take your time off each stage, don't rush. And then what we can do, look, we could have some silhouettes of some long grass sort of coming on the road if you want to. I won't go all the way down towards the sun. We'll just do it in black here in the foreground. So you can just use, look, just black and a fine liner and just sort of come out diagonally. We can create some harsh shadows of the long grass. So now a little cool touch. And then now this is dry, look, I can make my vibrant yellow much more vibrant. My cad yellow. So I don't want it so smudgedy. So, but just leaving it to dry and then just reapplying the paint, I can make it really bright and pretty. And the reason I'm taking so much time here in the middle of the paint is because that's the focus point. That's where I want the viewer to be looking at. So that's why I'm just taking my time. And just put my sunbeams back in. Now it's really nice and vibrant yellow. Just get some of that white and yellow. Just make it really electric. And 
And then what we're going to do, we're going to get some of that white and yellow, and we're going to create an outline on some of these clouds. So as I say, this is where the viewer is going to be looking straight directly to. So we're going to get some white and a tiny dot of yellow, but predominantly white. And what we're going to do is we're just going to outline some of our clouds and try to create a glow effect around them. So if I zoom in so you can see it a little bit clearer. And again, because the color is so pastel, it's predominantly white. If you have to go over it twice and outline it twice, that just might be the case. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to create really bright highlights. So think of where the sun would be beaming through. So look, if I have to go over it twice, sometimes you just need quite a lot of thick paint, but because we're painting over paint, there's already a layer of paint already. If you have to just go over it twice, so be it. Just dry your work and then just get a thick blob of paint. Try to use plenty of paint. And then look, we can have some little highlight breakaway clouds, just like we did with the darker clouds. So we can have these little highlighted ones. And just try to think where the light would be coming. So the light would be coming from underneath. So we were trying to recreate that on the clouds. So think of areas of the clouds that it would be sort of the light would be hitting. So it would be peeking out from the edges, and especially the underneath of these clouds. So look, I'm just going over it twice just to make it really bright. If you think of the sunlight, it's almost like bleaching around the edges of the clouds. It's giving us this really sharp outline. So if the sunbeam is sort of coming around there, it would sort of be blaring out this edge, wouldn't it? Sort of hitting these areas. So that diagonal sunbeam will sort of be coming out here. And then these areas would be sort of picking up bits of sunlight. So just outline that. So can you see now how we've blended the clouds, the light in the clouds from the orange to the pink to the cooler purples. Now we're putting these highlights over the top. Now it's all coming together. But it's the transition underneath in the sky and in the clouds that create the realism. So that's the thing that's tricking your eye. To, now we're putting the highlights on that creates that absolute realism. And it's not hard, this is what I keep trying to teach all you guys at home. It's all blending and trans transitions and working on that on your colours from hots to colds and the more you practice and the more you nail it the more easy it becomes and as you get better at all your drawing and your painting and trying to create scenes that are really unique to yourself and original to yourself the more it comes all together So we can have some light coming around here. Just try that on the base of these ones. Some holes poking through where that light is just bursting through. So look, if you see here, look, sometimes the bit of the purple cloud is going to shine up. So we'll leave it to dry and then we'll come back and we'll just outline it a little bit more once it's dry. So look, if you've got a little outline and it's a bit bland, just wait a little bit and then just put some more thick paint on. You can be putting highlights on the other areas while it's drying. So. And then we're just going to carry on that sunbeam. Look, now we know where it's going to be. It's coming all the way through the cloud. Just smear it with my finger so it's nice harsh. And the same with this one, you can have a bit, bit in the foreground, a bit behind it. So 
Why not have a bit going through that cloud? Join back up with the sun. And we can have one in the middle, didn't we? We had one in the middle. So again, we're just going around the clouds. I'm going to have that one a little bit wonky so it looks kind of realistic and not always dead straight. So we've got this nice shadow effect going on here. And I'm just going to take some purple and a little bit of orange. So some cool purple and orange and a little bit of white. I'm just going to make a really nice warm grey. And then I'm going to have a little bit of sunlight poking through. So again, where we've got the shadows of the long grass, you're also going to get little bits of sunlight sort of peeking through and casting a sort of reflection sort of thing. Oops, it's a bit thick. Never mind. So just smear it with my finger, make it less harsh. So you're going to get little bits of sunlight peeking through in between this long grass. So by just using a fine liner and then just creating sort of diagonal straight lines with this lovely sort of purpley orangey pink purpley orangey grey excuse me so we can have some that just sort of reflecting onto the row surface just a little added detail just gives it the realism gives it a little bit of texture as well as it comes towards the viewer. So there we go, we've got this nice shimmer, nice bit of light shining through. And then all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make sure my brush is dry and I'm gonna wipe away most of the paint. And then just with a clean brush, I'm just gonna go over the top and I'm just gonna blend it all together. Just so it's not as harsh. Just trying to soften it all up. Think of a filter on your phone when you um, soften up a surface like a skin or something like that. You know, when you take and edit a photo, we're just trying to give it a sort of glassy glaze just by using the dry brush, just with that paint. There we go, so it's nice and smooth. And then where we've done that, we're just going over with our black. So that's what he's saying, if you, if you change something, just make sure you re-go back and put what you've changed the foundation back in. So I think we're going to outline with a fine line of these road markings. You wouldn't normally have them outlined, but I think it's just to make them look more striking and more noticeable for the painting. So I'm just using a really fine brush. I'm just using black to outline them. And then from the sun, I'm just going to get some of that yellow and white so loads of white and a little bit of yellow and i'm just going to come straight down just neatened up my circle around the sun and i'm just going to create the road markings in that yellow and white and then again just putting some black in now we know where everything is i'm just going to make this really dark because if you imagine this area where we're standing is really going to be in the shade sort of almost silhouetted so I want it really harsh black just blend that in using quite a big brush and I think what I'm going to do is I want to sign it here in the bottom corner so where my signature is I want it really nice and dark so I'm just going to darken up this area here and I'm just going to darken up the road surface in the corner so the top of my signature you can see there can stand out so I need it dark around it. So I'm just going to make these corners really nice and dark and again by using a dark paint in your corners it just gets the viewer to focus down the middle. And I think she's finished. So I've signed her in the bottom corner. So we've got this lovely half sky, half road and terrain. We've got the central focus point of the sun right at the top of our road. You've learned how to do a transition in your background sky and then how to do the same in your clouds to create a glow effect. We've learned how to highlight them, how to create sunbeams and 
how to make your clouds look realistic by poking holes in the sky. You learned how to do the transition in color in your mountains and also in the road. How to have a focus point straight down in the middle for your views to focus on and how to create terrain and detail over the top with the darkened corners. So thank you so much for painting along with me at home of this landscape acrylic painting tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. We have about 100 landscape painting tutorials here now on the channel. So make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to tag me at mstuartpaintings on Instagram so I can show off your versions of the tutorials. See you soon. Bye.